You're listening to the British Baseball Podcast. Welcome baseball family to Around the Bases, the British baseball results show that showcases you, your team and your league. If you'd like to feature or get involved, you can submit a short video or voice message to me via DM or email, which is BritishBaseballPodcast at gmail.com, saying who you are, who you play for, and then give us a little overview of your weekend series, the good, the bad, and the amazing. Maybe it was a dazzling rookie display, a no-hitter, a walk-off grand slam, or maybe you just want to give some love to your team and your teammates. So here's your chance. This is the weekend of the 19th of June 2021 and saw a handful of teams in action as it's Father's Day here in the UK. So it was bye week for lots of teams in Scotland, the British Baseball League, the East of England's Baseball League and some other independent leagues. So the main bulk of the action comes from teams in the British Baseball Federation. So as usual, each team is playing a double header that should last seven innings or it's cut short due to time limits or the mercy rule. So let's know the scores. Now, just a quick note before we get into this, there are no standings available this week, but I hope they'll be available next week. The BBS Stats, Scores and Standings are brought to you by stats.britishbaseball.org, the game day website and scores updated by you. So thank you to Jim, Mariana and Niall for their contributions this week. If you want to do what they've done, again, just get in touch. And we'll include you in the show. So let's start off in the British Baseball Federation's NBL. All teams in actions, London Legends uh, to the London Capitals at Farnham Park. They played two games. The first game went 13 runs to three to the Capitals. And it was done within six innings. It was very close for the first three innings, but the Capitals scored four runs in the fourth and the sixth without reply to put that game out of reach. The second game saw the Capitals come away 7-0 again. Uh, David Bedard pitched all six innings, only allowing three hits as the, legend, as the Legends failed to score. The Essex Arrows travelled to London Mets playing at Enfield Playing Fields in London, and Thomas Flaherty pitched all six innings, only allowing five hits there. The Mets scoring one run in the first, six runs in the fourth, and three runs in the sixth and final inning. Game two saw the Mets sweep again 5-0, the Arrows not failing to land. Another clean sheet uh, there for the Mets, which sees them rooted at the top of the table. The Hearts Falcons welcomed the Lancashire Legends to Grove Hill Ballpark in Hemel Hempstead. Mariana Casal making history, being the first female pitcher to start an NBL game. But the Lancashire Legends spoiled the day, scoring seven of their 11 runs in the second inning with a few stolen bases. Game two saw the Legends take that one 15 runs to eight. Phil Clark, home run in the first, contributed to the five runs scored by the Falcons. But the game needed extra innings as both teams had five runs apiece going into the eighth inning where the Legends scored 10 runs to the Falcons free to clinch it. And here to tell us more about this day is Mariana. Hi, Matt. This is Mariana Cassell from Hearts NBL. I was the starting pitcher for Sunday's first game against Lancashire Legends. Um, I had spent the last two weeks asking anybody to catch a bullpen for me and getting videos of every angle, sending them to, to coaches to get advice. Um, and as nervous as I was, it felt so great to be up there. Um, I'm usually the second baseman for, for the Falcons um, and I feel really comfortable there. And for the last two years, I've been working on catching, actually, but due to a um, sprained thumb from catching a bullpen, I'm not allowed to catch for a while. So I thought this would be a perfect opportunity for me to practice my pitching. And um, I think it was worthwhile because it was a great experience being up there. I feel like I got into my zone um, really well uh, in the first inning. Um, I did what I needed to do. Uh, no runs went in in the first inning. Uh, there was a fly out and there were two strikeouts. One was swinging and one was looking. Um, so that was great. But what I did realise is that after getting fatigued, not just physically, um, as I'm used to just doing 30 pitch bullpens, but mentally, mentally, I, I started to lose my zone. I started to, um, it started to become difficult to just breathe. 
Um, and that's when I was not hitting my spots and that's when um, the curveballs just weren't breaking like I wanted them to. Um, and that was a bit frustrating. And I, as much as I think it looked like I kept my composure, um, I know that my dad and Phil, our catcher, who not only have known me for years, but who are experienced players, they, um, they came to talk to me on the mound. They told me I need to breathe. They told me I need to take time between each pitch and not just read the sign and throw straight away. And so I did that. Um, and I really tried to focus on each pitch at a time rather than thinking about the previous ones, rather than thinking about the fact that there were runners on base. And then I was finally hitting my spots again. My curveballs were breaking again. Um, and the inning was finally over. Um, but as much as I wanted to, to go back and prove that I could still be there, it was just, it was time. Um, I, it, it was something I wasn't used to and it was time to, to go for a, to another picture. Um, and as much as I probably beat myself up a bit after that, it was, it was experience that it was the experience I needed. I'd never um, been had that pressure um, in this level before. And this is my first year in this level. So I have a lot to learn. Um, I'm ready to learn it all. I'm ready to be pushed. And I'm really excited to see where things are going to go for me um, in this sport and just where it's taking me in life. Um, as for the team in general, the first game, we decided at the end of both games that the first game, Lang uh, Lancashire Legends definitely won it. They were strong. Um, they were a strong team. Their pitcher was dominating us. But then in the second game, we had so many opportunities where we could have won. And I think there were points where even the other team thought that we had it. Um, we were very, very close. But what proved is that in the extra innings, the pressure was worse on us. Um, we, as a team, couldn't take it any, couldn't take the pressure as well as the legends could. Um, their energy stayed high and we all started to drop um, and we ended up losing the game. Um, we, yeah, it was, it was definitely us who lost that game um, and it, it all turned to mental mistakes and mental errors. But I think especially um, at the beginning of that game and even, even towards the end, we were we showed that we are capable um of of winning a game and that we can be strong um so we have a lot to work at but i'm excited for the months and years to come to see where things go so um thank you for having me on and see you later Thank you, Mariana. Now on to the BBF AA. We had the Essex Arrows taking on the East London Latin Boys uh, at Town Mead Plainfields in Waltham Abbey. Their games ended up being three runs to one to the Arrows and they split the series with the Latin Boys as they won the second game, eight runs to five. The Richmond Knights took on the Essex Redbacks AAA team. Uh, the first game was 11 runs to seven in favour of the Redbacks. The Redbacks set a high bar in the first with eight runs scored, with former guest Richard Chesterton being heavily involved in the action throughout. The Knights looked to, like making a comeback with three runs scored in the fourth and sixth inning, but ultimately they fell short. Game two saw another win for the Redbacks as they won 20-2. to two. The game lasted five innings as the Redbacks shot out of the blocks early again, and maintained high scoring throughout all five of those innings. On to the London Marauders and the London Mammoths. It was the Marauders that drew first blood with 10 runs to one in game one. In similar fashion to the Redbacks, eight of those runs were scored in the first inning, but it took until the seventh inning for them to score again as they notched up two more runs. The Mammoths run coming in the third courtesy of Brian Deering, scoring off an Osvaldo Rivero Badia single to centre field. Game two saw the Mammoths win that one 10 0. Uh, countdown, it was literally a countdown, four runs in the first, three runs in the second, then one run um, at the end, as it was called, in the fifth. 
Fish Baseball Federation double A scores. Now we have the Richmond Dragons double A team traveling to the East London Latin Boys double A team at Waltham, Walthamstow Avenue in London. Uh, game one there saw the Dragons take it 13 runs to nine. And there's an even closer game in game two as it ended up being 16 runs to 15 to the uh, Richmond Dragons. Uh, Latin Boys took the lead in the second inning, 3-1, but then the Dragons fought back, winning the fourth inning, 6-1. They took the fifth inning, four runs to two, and the sixth inning was four runs to three. The Latin Boys almost completing that comeback in the seventh inning with a 6-1 win uh, in that seventh inning, but it wasn't enough. The Essex Archers went to Grove Hill Bay, uh, Ballpark in Hemel Henstead to face the Hearts Hawks, and they won both of their games. The first game being 16 1, and the second game being 14 5. So, game one was called off after four innings with Dave, uh, with Dave Nagler, the pitcher, getting the win for the Archers from the mound, but he's also having a great day at the plate, too. And game two lasted five innings with the Archers going high in every inning, but the Hawks gave it to them as well. There are no results for the Monarchs versus the Bucks and the Oxford Kings versus the Norwich Iceni. Again, I think that's due to Father's Day. BBF single A. We have results for the Hearts Eagles welcoming the Essex Redbacks single A to Basing Hill Ballpark. So game one was 17 runs to four for the Redbacks and game two was 17 runs to nine in favour of the Redbacks as well. Game one, the Redbacks hit five runs in the first with the Eagles running in two of their own. But the Redbacks added four runs in the second and another five in the third without reply to build on their league. The Eagles got their other two runs in the fourth, but the Redbacks put it out of sight in the fifth inning with a further three more runs. Game two saw the Redbacks James Davis hit a triple in the first as they notched up four runs in that inning, followed by five runs in the second and third innings and a final three runs in the fourth inning. But the Eagles only managed two runs in the first, three more runs in the third and four runs in the fourth. Guildford Goldcats travel to Waterhall playing fields in Brighton to face the Brighton Jets in their double header. The Goldcats started with youth athlete Kimmy Hope on the mound. The Goldcats only managed to score in the first two innings, but the Jets hit well throughout that series as they run it 12 runs to four. And a really close game too, which went also to the Jets, 15 runs to 14. Um, it looked really, really fun from what I've read up on. Neither team scoring in the first and the second inning was 5-1 to the Jets. Inning three was 5-0 to the Goldcats. Inning four was three runs to two in favour of the Goldcats. Neither team scoring in the fifth inning, but the drama of the sixth inning saw the Jets score eight runs to the Goldcats five in what, looked, what has been documented as well, pitching and a fair few walks being a downfall there in the end. South Coast Sea Dogs at Kent Buccaneers single A at Williams Field was cancelled, but we do have action from the Kent Mariners at home at Aylesford Bulls Rugby Club uh, hosting the Tombridge Bobcats. Game one there was 17 runs to nine to the Mariners and 13 runs to 10 in favour of the Mariners in games two. There's six home runs hit across two games. And here to tell us about this is the Bobcats, Niall Cafferty. Hey, Matt. Niall from the Tunbridge Bobcats here again. Thanks for having me again. Another weekend and another doubleheader, this time against the Kent Mariners. We were fortunate the fixtures went ahead the recent weather had taken its toll on the diamond, but we worked for about an hour and a half and got it up to a playable standard, which both teams were pleased about. And we're grateful for those who contributed to getting it into that state. I guess the main talking point from the games were the combined six home runs that were hit, three for each team. I don't know for sure, but I'd say that's pretty unheard of at single A especially. And you've got to respect a home run regardless if it was hit for you or the opposition. It was great to see some highlight reel hitting. For ourselves, the home runs came via Grant Theus hitting two and Mitchell Borrego at Callahan getting his maiden home run, which was definitely off, definitely the monkey off his back for Mitch. You watch him in training and in BP hit really well, but couldn't quite do it on Sundays through his own omission. But yesterday that all changed and what a hit it was too. Deep left field, an absolute no doubter. Everyone was loving it and I was made up for him. We also had another new debutant, which is a great theme for us this year. Luna played her first ever competitive game 
and gained multiple warts, scored multiple runs with some very impressive base running. It was really good to see how enthusiastic she was, as were all the new players that we have. The future is bright for us. I'd also like to thank the Mariners for Sunday. It was a good game and a good day all round. The game's played in the right way, just how it should be. If I could also plug our YouTube channel, you can check out some of our highlights as made up by Rob Best, our photographer slash videographer slash the base extraordinaire. Just simply search for Tunbridge Baseball Club on YouTube and give us a follow. Cheers, guys, and thanks, Matt, and I'll speak to you next time. Thanks, Niall. Uh, as always, eager to get his team involved in these roundup shows, always producing content and videos, and it's very greatly appreciated. Thanks, Niall. So let's have a look now at the Richmond Duke single A as they hosted the Brighton Brewers at Floodfield in Ham. Game one was 15 runs to 10 in favour of the away side. So the Brewers there uh, scoring four runs in each of the first three innings and then three more in the fifth. The Dukes started their comeback with single runs in the second and third, but ramped it up in the fifth innings, scoring five runs and an additional three in the final innings. But it wasn't enough, even with Mark Pinchler homing deep to left centre field in the bottom of the fifth for the Dukes. Game two saw the Brewers take that one as well, 16 runs to 11. The Brewers going five runs in the first three innings. And let's hear more from Jim about these games in more detail. Hi, my name's Jim. Uh, I'm currently in my rookie season at Brighton Baseball Club. Uh, I play for the Brighton Brewers in the single A Division South. And we're currently top of the league, uh, having a really great start to the season. Uh, and I'm here just to give a little bit of feedback on our doubleheader this weekend versus Richmond at Flood Field in Ham. Um, we showed up and they were looking really sharp in warm-up. They, had, they clearly had a couple of good arms in the infield uh, and some fast pitching as well. And sure enough, uh, the first match, we managed to take 15-10, uh, and, but it was some fast pitching, possibly fast as we faced this season. Um, so we had to be really on our batting game to, to get the runs. Um, Chris Ladyfingers, mates, uh, pitched all five innings for us with a fantastic performance and only a second ever uh, performance on the mound. Um, so we were really chuffed with that. Um, and probably my favourite play of the match, um, I think my, my team would all agree, was Justin Flynn proving that third base really is Justin's house with an outrageous, leaping, gazelle-like jump to his left to pluck a ball out of thin air. It was, it was a lovely play. Um, going into the second game, I managed to get on this game myself and managed to get myself three runs, which is the season's best for me, so I was really happy with that. Um, uh, we took the game 16-10, so pretty similar result to the first match. Again, we had to be on our hitting game, and we were. A couple of dogs ran on the pitch to spoil play a couple of times, which was fine, quite funny in the end. Um, Ladyfingers himself hit his first ever home run in what is only his third or fourth match ever. So, you know, we were obviously really chuffed with that. He got a standing ovation. Um, and my favourite play uh, was probably Mike Steele hitting an audacious bunt to slightly to left field, uh, getting his single um, and then eventually bringing his run home. Um, the weather held out. It was a beautiful weekend. Um, it looked rubbish at the start, but it really nicely warmed up for us. Richmond were great sports. I'm convinced they're going to finish higher in the league than their current position suggests. Um, if you're in, new to the game and you or you want to return to the game and you're in the Sussex area or um, Brighton City itself, do come down to Brighton Baseball Club. We've got some great coaching staff. It's a very inclusive club uh, and we have great time at practice and every game. So, yeah, it'll be great to see you and I hope to see you all again soon. Cheers. Thanks for that, Jim. Jim making his first appearance on the British Baseball Podcast. There's always a first time for everyone and a welcome return for anyone that wants to come back on again and add more scores and notes to these um, little results shows. So thank you all to my uh, guests for coming on, Jim, Mariana and Niall. Uh, really appreciate that um, taking time out of your busy schedules to, to share some more insights into your games. And again, if you want to get involved in these roundup shows, BritishBaseballPodcast at gmail.com or wherever you find me on social media, just drop me a message to see if you want to have a little interview about it or how you can get your content added to these shows. And that's it for me this week. Sorry, it's a short one, but again, Father's Day, uh, not allowing many games to go ahead. So we'll have a full fat uh, version next week. And uh, I hope you have a good one. Stay safe, train hard, and I'll see you all soon.